All right, welcome back to the channel, First Responder Golf. Captain Steve Pope here with the Kansas City, Kansas Fire Department, as you see behind me. I'm here with Cassidy, and I want you to tell everyone your qualifications. Yeah. Hi, I'm Cassidy. I am a local Kansas City therapist that specializes in first responders. I got my certification to work with first responders, and I still do monthly ride-alongs with the different departments in the area just to help network, show my face, and show the community who I am and what we can do to help. Okay, yeah, I've, we've connected through social media. Yes. And you also put stuff out there about ADHD. And I, I guarantee you there's probably a lot of first responders. I imagine so. That have ADHD. So follow her on Instagram. <laughs> she puts out some good fun content and uh, it's, it's all related to therapy, first responders, yes. ADHD, which mm -hmm. you go through. Absolutely. And uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll share that information below in, in, in this video. But this video is gonna be an interview talking about uh, mental health for first responders, mm -hmm. and we're gonna cover a lot of topics today, so uh, let, let's get into it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, uh, Cassidy, I wanna tell you my story, and hopefully it relates with people out there, but for me, with my mental health issues with, from this job, and I've also come to find out with counseling, you know, both my parents were alcoholics, so I had that baggage bringing into a profession that piles up over time, the cumulative effect. Mm -hmm. But mine was taking my, being at home and just anger issues and taking that out of my family. Uh, I remember my wife would say, we preferred when you were at work. Mm -hmm. And that never resonated with me before I started this journey in mm -hmm. 2017 when a firefighter friend of mine went through the peer support class and he and I were playing golf and he, he said, Steve, you don't realize what this job's done to you because I opened up to him about taking anger out of my, my son. And that started me on my journey yeah. to where I started the social media in 2020, but I had that like two and a half year span where I was working on myself. Right. And once I started this, I know there's people out there that have the same story of taking that home because I've had spouses contact me yeah. say, your story is my husband or my wife. So mm -hmm. with that being said, what signs and symptoms can spouses look for, especially mm -hmm. the first responders that are suffering, right. uh, look for? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good question. I would definitely say withdrawing behaviors. Okay. Yep. Isolation. That was me. Detachment. Me. Rather it's from your kids, your wife, um, activities that you enjoy doing. Okay. I still played golf, so the, th that wasn't me there, but the, <laughs> well, the first three were, that was, were, the, that was the coping, yes. Yes, good, good. Yeah, so just recognizing interactions that you have with your family and maybe you're not as engaged or maybe you're more overprotective um, than usual or seeing the changes in your children. So maybe you're projecting onto them yeah. and now they're showing symptoms. Yes. Um, of anxiety, son. depression, anger outbursts, yeah. role reversals. So then now the child feels like they have to soothe you um, to an extent, or even walking on eggshells. Well, that, that, that was said. Yes. All yes. this is true. I, I'm tearing up because I, I just knew this was what was happening, but I didn't understand what was happening. Absolutely. And when I look back, that's what was happening. Right. And right. that's the thing when I was going through it, I didn't. Yeah. I couldn't put two and two together. And I think what you're doing in educating families and other first responders is so critical. Um, it can help spread the awareness and look for the signs right. that they might be displaying. Well, and that's the goal that I started with all this social media, was to keep it relevant. Do another interview with, with you since I've become connected. Mm -hmm. I did one with Dr. Prohaska mm -hmm. yes. three years ago. Yes. and wonderful stuff she told me, and mm -hmm. I'm hoping that people see in this newer video mm -hmm. uh, find something from it. So that's the goal with the social media, is mm -hmm. to make it relevant. Yes. You never know, after I'm gone off this earth, someone sees these YouTube videos and, mm -hmm. hey, you know, Catherine Absolutely. Pope was right. So we got those signs and symptoms, like hypervigilance for me is a little bit a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, like, I like to sit where I can see the door at a mm -hmm. restaurant, mm -hmm. and I'm not a cop or a military guy wanting, but I just, there's startle effects mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Not bad, but I do know other first responders that I've talked to have nightmares from calls that they've ran. That's not yeah. my one of mine, mm -hmm. but if you mm -hmm. wanted to speak on that, how that might affect people in mm -hmm. the long run. Um, yeah, definitely the nightmares, avoiding certain situations, um, areas that maybe you had a bad call. Okay. Um, it could be anything that triggers that emotional response. So it could be a necklace or 
a smell, anything that kind of brings you back into that situation or triggers those emotions. So I can relate a story from a smell. Uh, early on in my career, we, the pumper ran a car fire mm -hmm. and me and one of my classmates, still on the job, this is probably 27 years ago, mm -hmm. we were on the truck company that day, so we get sent out to go back to that car fire, mm -hmm. but we're there to recover a body that was found on the floorboard. Well, the coroner's there. Uh, so me and Sean, glove up, get in there, and the coroner wants us to flip the body over. But to tell people the things that we see, and this stays with me, but not in such a way that gives me nightmares, but it's, it's the allostatic load that we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. It's still there in my mind that this guy's butt looks like a burnt roast that you take out of an oven. So when you're talking about mm -hmm. a smell, mm -hmm. so we flip him over, the coroner's laughing, yeah, it's a boy, and, and you know, mm -hmm. I'm six months on the job. Right. When we get back to the station, we don't talk about that stuff mm -hmm. and how that might affect us. Mm -hmm. So the, when we would cook at that station, yeah. I, the, the oven, but the irony also story is the pumper ran a car wreck on the highway and brings back a deer to the station oh. and we, mm -hmm. we we take the meat from the deer and we're cooking the meat and so that smell from cooking yeah. it, it's weird how that, all that stuff does that mm -hmm. um, but I thought I'd tell that story because it's a real story that's still in my mind I, mm -hmm. I think about it a lot whenever Sean and I see each other we talk about it um, mm -hmm. but I can only imagine what things other people have seen mm -hmm. that how it affects them mm -hmm. so I don't know if you have anything to add to that yeah, I would say one thing that's important to know is that trauma is not necessarily what happens to you. It's the way your body reacts. Okay. Because what might be traumatic for you might not be traumatic for someone else. Correct. Or it could be so many, like if you've experienced so many, it could take that one traumatic event to just, you know, cause you to have PTSD. All right, Cassidy, perfect segue from what we were talking about mm -hmm. with the piling up of the stressors. And one thing I always like to talk about is the allostatic load. If you want to explain that to the first responders and, yes. the, and the spouses that might be seeing this. Yes, so the term comes from allostasis and that is our body's ability to adapt to everyday stressors to help maintain stability. So it's a way for a body to respond to the demands. So a firefighter runs into a fire or a building. Or we, a heart attack or a, a car wreck yes. that's pretty bad. So our adrenaline is getting dumped in those situations. So is, is that kind of what you're alluding to? Yes. Okay. So our, your body will adjust the heart rate, the hormone levels to meet those demands. Okay. Allostatic load is when, it's like the wear and tear on your body when you're trying to meet those demands. and it's, it becomes chronic. Your body cannot, when you're in that mode, your body cannot relax and get out of that state. So it, lead, it can, for firefighters, it can lead to cardiovascular issues, health issues, um, heart attacks, hypertension. Mm -hmm. It can lead to metabolic changes. So we know stress can lead to unhealthy eating habits, which can lead to obesity and diabetes. It can lead to PTSD, it can lead to anxiety, depression. So for me, I know I had some gut issues and it turned out to be just uh, diverticulitis, but all the research I've done shown that stress can cause those issues. Mm -hmm. But also I had uh, a, a patch of hair I lost mm. and they say, possibly stress with that mm -hmm. too. And once I was able to do my self journey through that, because that was at the height of a lot of my stress mm -hmm. that I didn't understand was mm -hmm. happening to me, but allostatic load explains it. And that's why I always like to share that because mm -hmm. it kind of explains not only my story, that, you, know, you, you got that adrenaline then it's dumped and then mm -hmm. you're, you can't figure out how to come back off that. And in my opinion, it leads to a lot of first responders being alcoholics, mm -hmm. drug abusers, uh, mm -hmm. almost running their families like my situation with because I didn't understand what was happening to me and that's what I'm, this video is about is mm -hmm. try to get that message out there that this is real mm -hmm. and I was one that never th believed it was real because mm -hmm. I thought this job I was stress-free I loved it mm -hmm. uh, I still do but it's just 
now I want people to be aware. So any more to add on the allostatic part? Um, I would say just get in tune with your body, recognize okay, I agree. when something's not at baseline. And the better you are in tune with your body, the more able you're able to recognize that, hold on, something's going on here. Yep. And so that's when you can take action to make some change. I 100% agree, and I wasn't aware of what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. To be honest, that, that's, that's the story. All right, uh, another, another question I like, question or just a conversation we can have would be, how are the stressors different with police officers, EMS, compared to firefighters? We're here mm -hmm. in front of a fire truck, so it's like, <laughs> you know, we're mainly talking about a lot of my situation as a firefighter, but mm -hmm. now that, you know, I have some friends that are police officers, a couple of them that are on the board, um, how, and I've talked to them, I don't know how, I couldn't do that job yeah. <laughs> with the way the public can be. And I, I know when we go on those, those calls where mm -hmm. it's like uh, domestic disturbances or drunks, it's like, it takes a special person to put up and, and patience to put up with that. We get to come back to the station, <laughs> they gotta stay dealing with it. So mm -hmm. you've done ride alongs, relate yes. that, yes. what you've seen and how theirs might be different, but the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. I definitely see a little bit of a difference. However, when it comes to PTSD and trauma, it, you have certain criteria to meet. Well, and they see a lot of the same things we see. Yes, so. yes. Um, with firefighters, the sleep deprivation and yes. the work schedules, I would say, are detrimental to one's mental health, physical health, and overall well-being. I, I agree. So touch on the sleep deprivation and how it affects Mm -hmm. You know, not only firefighters, but anybody, mm -hmm. anybody that doesn't get sleep out there. Because what I've come to find out through all this, people, that not, not just first responders, but just the general public, stress is real for everyone. Mm -hmm. And especially sleep deprivation. Right. So touch on that for us. Yeah, with sleep deprivation, whew, that can cause a lot of issues. So physical health, right? So your body is not able to recover easily, as easy, I And that's say. good for body and mind, mm -hmm. you agree? Okay. Right, yeah, I do agree with that. And so your body's not able to recover as quickly, you know, um, you might be more prone to illnesses. The mental health, you are gonna probably be suffering more to um, anxiety and depression, or with work, your okay. cognitive abilities are probably not very sharp if you're not getting adequate sleep. <laughs> you're more prone to making mistakes. Yeah, um, I agree. And, and then that leads to the problems at home too with the sleep deprivation. Yes, uh, that, it's a domino effect. Okay, I like that. So for me, I know when we ran like a fire at one or two in the morning and it's hard to get back to sleep when you get back to the station. And so uh, I just, I can only imagine what it's like for the people on the ambulance here. Um, even though they're young, and that's what I like to do is, I wish I'd known this stuff 27 years ago, and I make a point to talk to all of our, uh, and so does our peer support, but I talk to mm -hmm. all of our academy classes, and I hope to, to talk to people metro-wide or nationwide eventually to let them know how serious of a problem all of this is, mm -hmm. um, and let their young firefighters, police officers, EMS, you know, ER nurses and doctors that, I mean, they deal with the same thing right. that they see it. They would be called like a second responder because mm -hmm. we bring it to them, but mm -hmm. you know, they're doing their thing and it's, it's impactful in their minds too. So that's the whole goal of this video, this channel, mm -hmm. this social media, and just like you post on your social media stuff, mm -hmm. you know, you have your mission and to yes. help as many as you can with Absolutely. mental health. So that's, And yeah. I think it's working. I definitely get people reaching out all around the country saying they wish they had someone closer or just that knowledge, mm -hmm. that general knowledge. Okay. And it's, it's working. Well, I, I, I love when their stuff comes across because <laughs> one, it's either funny or it's, it's, <laughs> it's a focused thing that, yeah, that makes perfect sense what you yeah. post. And so I enjoy sharing your stuff to, to one because that's what networking's about is mm -hmm. let's get it out there. Someone else might see me share it mm -hmm. through, through mm -hmm. the network that, that we've built with the foundation and Firefighter Golf, which started it all before right. it grew into the foundation. Okay, Cassidy, uh, are there any other talking points you'd like to discuss the people watching this video that you feel are important? Yeah, I, I have a couple things. Okay. So I would recommend getting preventative therapy. And what's that mean? So that means let's get ahead of it before it becomes a problem or 
mandatory even. Okay, so when you say preventative though, yes. before it becomes a problem, mm -hmm. like my situation, I didn't realize I was struggling completely. You mm -hmm. know, I was always saying I can handle, I can right. overcome it myself, but I didn't know that I, this job was causing that. Mm -hmm. So when you say preventative, what could we educate them about? Yeah, so for the new recruits um, okay. at the academy and stuff, getting that information out there. And then for already, obviously, firefighters, I would recommend if you notice, um, I'm more angry than usual, or my uh -huh. spouse is saying I'm irritable, or I'm not really engaged. If you hear them say something like, we walk on eggshells around here. Absolutely. That should be the sign. There is a sign. There's Whether you feel it or not, yes. you should probably get to therapy. I would say take heed to that, please. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So those are a couple warning signs. So get in therapy, okay, um, before it's needed. 100%. And then the other one is you don't necessarily have to go to an EAP therapist unless you know, the department's like, you need to go. Okay. Um, then you're probably more likely you, you do need to go to one. Um, but there's other options out there. So individual therapist, you can go and see one. Um, so just that little tidbit. Okay. And then my last piece of advice is when you do go to therapy, it is okay if you do not connect with the first therapist you go to. Go to a couple um, if you don't connect with the first one, okay. try a second one. Even if you need to try a third one, it's kind of like shopping around. For therapy, you need that therapeutic relationship. You need a clinician who specializes with this culture so that you get the benefits out of it. I agree. Um, and you progress and you heal and you get through your journey. Oh, I agree 100% because early on in this journey in 2020, when I interviewed Dr. Prohaska, uh, I got a lot from that because she specializes in mm -hmm. first responders. And then when I connected with you through social media and watching your content, you know, there's that connection there that even though you're not my therapist and I haven't come to, to you, mm -hmm. I get value from what I'm seeing from you mm -hmm. and, and hearing from you. So that's, that's important. I a hundred percent agree. And I, to tell a story that I told you off camera is I had a EAP therapist that I kind of had, had to educate about PTS and I didn't go see him anymore. And mm -hmm. I found another one. So yes, hundred percent yes. of what she said. Yeah. Uh, you know, thanks for coming on the channel oh, yeah, and, and getting this information out there even more in a, in an updated video mm -hmm. with better audio and, <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned through this three years how to be a better videographer, editor, cameraman. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can't say thank you enough for trying to help first responders with this video and, and coming all the way out here to the fire station, as you yeah, see in the absolutely. background. Absolutely. I'm so, happy to be here. All right, Cassidy, thanks for, again, for coming on the channel. And again, first responder brothers and sisters out there, Stress is real. The allostatic load is real. It builds up over time. It did to me. And I wish I knew this stuff 27 years ago when I started mm -hmm. my career because I'd probably be in a better place. But here I am now. Yes, exactly. Here I am now, though. Exactly. Trying to share my story so it doesn't happen to someone again. Mm -hmm. it, inevitably, it's going to mm -hmm. because we're, we're hard headed as first responders. <laughs> you said it. Yes. <laughs> but for someone suffering through what I suffered through, and I'm gonna say, because I was suffering. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, I was. Please get help. Yeah. Contact us, we use golf as an outlet. Find an outlet out there that helps you clear your mm -hmm. mind um, so you don't take the stress back to your family or alcohol, drug abuse, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. So what would you like to add on top of what I just said there? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, get ahead of it and find an outlet that is relaxing for you. If you find it to be golf, meditating, working out, yep. be active. I, that's one piece of advice. Get that 1% better, I, right? Exactly. Yes. Follow <laughs> no matter me on what Instagram. It is. <laughs> there it is, that 1%, 1% better each day. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Mental, physical, because the what, physical helps the mental. Just 1%, yes. just 1% better it might yourself be. each day. I like that when and you that. post that stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, yeah. Okay, that's what we got. well, thanks for being on the channel and uh, I look forward to seeing you at the golf tournament mm -hmm. August 5th this year. So, um, Mental Health Awareness Month when this video is coming out. So please be self-aware and I love y'all. Yes.
Thank you. All right, thanks. Awesome.